Hello, good morning, and thank you for getting up so early. <laughs> is is everybody here to have some KDE fun? Or is someone, I don't know, uh, in the wrong room accidentally? Because uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about LibreOffice on KDE KF5. Uh, everybody knows what LibreOffice is. Is there anybody who doesn't know? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's the it's 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 the best free and open office suit out there, and uh, I'm gonna I wanna tell you people something about how how uh, LibreOffice got the new cute KF5 front end. Yeah, so something about me. I'm Bubli, as you can see. I'm one of the LibreOffice core developers. I I love mentoring, so I participate in Google Summer of Code as a mentor as well. I'm an unsuccessful cute fidget charmer and I'm also a feminist, but this is not what it's gonna be about, even though there is one feminist slide, I have to admit. So what is it gonna be about? Uh, yes, as I said, uh, I will, I will show you or, or somehow walk with you through the journey how, how LibreOffice 6.2 uh, got a new cute KF5 front end. Uh, how, which steps did we take and how, how was the journey from the old KD4 front end to the new KF5? And it will happen in five steps. So in the beginning, we'll have a look at the, at the user interface like VCL architecture on LibreOffice, how this works on Linux. Uh, then uh, we will have a look at some some reasons like why did he decide well not really the to to port but to write the new KF front end completely from scratch what challenges did we have to overcome then I will say something about the file picker about the file dialogues and at the end we will have a look like what's new some some cherries on the top of the cake. Okay, uh, VCL plugin architecture on Linux. What is VCL? I asked on IRC a couple of days ago and those are the answers I got. It's, if you ask me, I would say it's like very confusing library or very confused library. Uh, actually, it's the second one. It's the visual class library and it's the library that's part of LibreOffice. And everything visual, everything what's on the screen, everything renderable has to at some point pass through VCL. So if you if you work with user interface in LibreOffice, you're touching VCL code. If you print, that's VCL again. Even if you have LibreOffice on a server in a headless mode, VCL is used to render the documents. And as you perhaps know, uh, LibreOffice runs on three main platforms. That's Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. And of course, we have like lots of platform-dependent bits inside. And those platform-dependent bits live inside VCL as well. And when I say platform-dependent bits, what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, it's some widget look and feel. So if you use LibreOffice on Windows, you, you would perhaps want LibreOffice to look like a standard Windows application. And similarly, if you have the KDE Plasma, you would, you would want LibreOffice to have some, some KDE-like look and feel. Uh, another platform defendant bit, those can be the, the menus. LibreOffice can render menus by itself, but under some circumstances, it can delegate this task to the underlying desktop environment. Uh, then, of course, it's the file or folder picker dialogs. In Windows, you want to see probably the standard file choice dialog you're used from the Windows, and the same on the other platforms as well. And of course, printing. Every, every platform has, has its own way how to print things. So what kind of platform dependent bits we have in, in LibreOffice? So uh, first of all, it's like for Windows and Mac OS X. In Linux, situation is a bit more diverse. There we have the GTK, the legacy GTK, and the newer GTK3 frontend for the GNOME desktop environment. 
Uh, then we have the generic X11 front end that looks like extra ugly Windows 95. And well, since a decade, there was a KDE port, like KDE 4 port for, for K desktop environment and uh, less than less than a year old is Qt5 and KF5, which is what this what this is going to be about today. So uh, there are some some terms or some some points I have to somehow clarify before I I get to the to somehow explaining how how does user interface work on. On LibreOffice, and one of them is cell instance, and the other is cell frame. And there's the third one that is going to be on the next slide. So, cell instance that is something that can one imagine like some kind of user interface manager. Uh, maybe it would be better to show a picture. Yes, the cell instance is in the cell instance is in the left corner, and. Her main task, or one of the most important tasks, is to create cell frames. And what is cell frame? So many of the of the rectangular objects you see on the screen when you when you run LibreOffice are cell frames. So the main window is a cell frame. Any pop-up dialog is a cell frame. And if you if you open a drop-down menu like this, so so this kind of drop-down, that's a cell frame as well. And even tooltip is a cell frame. So the, the main task, or one of the most important tasks of cell instance is to, to create and destroy those cell frames, like open, in other words, to open windows. Other important task is to create the file pickers. And every platform, Windows, Mac OS X, every Linux flavor has its own implementation of cell instance. And of course, like the own implementation of cell frames. And then there is cell graphics. So every, every cell frame is in charge of acquiring and releasing of cell graphics. And also like there are different implementations as well. And cell graphics is something you can imagine. It's something that enables you to put some content to draw inside the frame. Uh, it contains, it consists of, of uh, low-level APIs such as draw a line, draw a rectangle, draw a polygon, write text. And what's perhaps the like most interesting part of the cell graphics and of the API is to is to draw the native control. That means to draw a bitmap that looks like a widget with uh, with native look and feel. So with some some. If we are in KDE desktop with some KDE theme, I don't know, for example, Breeze. So this is what the draw native control is about. And here, one, uh, once again, like the same, some kind of summary. Cell instance is the, is the UI manager, which creates and destroys the cell frames, in other words, the windows. The windows acquire and release the solo cell graphics so that they can actually display something. And then we, of course, like we have some, some cell data, but that's kind of less important at the moment. Fair enough. Uh, so KDE4 frontend existed with LibreOffice more or less for, for a decade already. So why did we decide to, to ditch it or to obsolete it? and to, to write a new front-end from KF5, KDE Plasma. Well, because almost like every, every Linux distribution out there, or I can hardly think of any Linux distribution that still maintains and supports KDE5. Uh, KDE, uh, KDE4, sorry, uh, KDE4 front-end has been always some kind of very, very thin layer around the X11 or Xlib. And what you, what you see on the screen, it looks a bit like, it looks like KDE, but it's just an illusion. It's just an emulation of the real KDE look and feel. Maybe I will show it like on the picture like this. So if you're familiar with Qt, we take the Qt painter, 
and com combine it with queue style to, to render a widget, for example, a button or a checkbox or a text. And like with Qt Painter and Q style option, we create a queue image, a bitmap that looks like a button, that looks like a checkbox, that looks like, I don't know, a toolbar button. And then we take the queue image and we paste it into QPix map, which is also some kind of bitmap. And taking many widgets like this, we combine the QPix map and create a bitmap that looks like a dialog that we see on the screen. And then we take this, this whole cute pix map and simply paste it into the X11 window. So what you see in KD4 frontend, those are not the native Qt windows, those are not the native KD5 windows, those are low, low level X11 windows. And then we simply like take the cute pix map, take the X11, X11 pix map out of it, and copy it directly into the X11 window. This has, of course, like uh, many issues. It is slow and it is error prone. And as we can see with Qt5, we can no longer do this. But I will get to that later. I said X11, so this is like the X11 windows and X11 PixMap, that's not the only point of dependency on X11. The other point of dependency is that we use the KDE4, use the XLIP way of processing the events, this Q application X11 process event. And yes, since we have the low level X11 X, uh, windows, the modality of the dialog, so if you, if you open a pop-up dialog, it's kind of the, the thing that prevents you from interacting with the underlying dialog. This is, this is not really possible. Well, it is somehow implemented for KDE4, but it's a hack inside, inside VCL. So no native modality possible. And since I kept talking about X11, X11, X11 all the time, how much this front end really depends on X11, uh, of course it wouldn't work on Wayland. So what's the conclusion? We can, no way can we access the X11 Pix map with Qt5 anymore because the merry gentleman of Qt company decided to obsolete all the X11, like access to X11 functions in Qt5. So we can no longer do this. We can no longer use the X11 Pix map and we can no longer process the events X11 way. So, the conclusion out of this is that we can't simply take the KD4 frontend and port it to KF5. We have to start from, go back to the drawing board and start from scratch. So, and um, this is, this is, this is how I felt when I, when I realized how, how much work such a rewrite from scratch is going to be. But we can do it. And we did. And this is the only feminist slide I have, I have in my talk. So, uh, what what challenges did we have to overcome, and how how did this how did this right from scratch for Q5 and K5 really happened? So. As we can no longer use X11 windows, we have to replace them with something. And this was perhaps the, the most difficult part, because like we, we replaced, we replaced the, the windows with the native Q windows or Q widget respectively. So if you remember a few slides back when I talked about the cell frames, everything like all the windows you see, all the tooltips you see are cell frames. So now there is one-to-one -one mapping between a cell frame and queue widget. For the main window, it's a queue main window, respectively. And so every cell frame uh, contains like pointer to the queue widget. And one of the nice side effects of this is that we no longer need this crazy VCL hack to implement some pseudo dialog modality 
but we can do it natively, which I'm going to show shortly. So this is a this is a LibreOffice on K KF five. I'm gonna show the about dialog to to convince you that I'm not lying. Here is KDE five, <laughs> and yes, yeah, so I, I I put the window to the full screen mode, and I will try to open some of the dialog. For example, this one. And as you can see now, now this like the fancy, the background of the window is kind of grayed out to make it very clear to the user that only this window is active. And it is, it is nicely, like the window is nicely centered over the main window. It was previously not possible. And the APIs we use that like are set modality and set tri transient parent, but it's like some kind of implementation detail. Okay, so we got rid of the X windows and replaced them with Q widgets and Q windows. The next challenge is how to, how to paint to the windows, how to implement the SAL graphics, which is the thing he used to paint into the windows without X11. So there were basically like two options. The first option, which is, which is something the plane plain Qt, like not KF5, but the plain Qt frontend uses, is to implement the entire style graphic, this entire system for painting into the windows from scratch. And if you remember, like I mentioned, the kind, kind of API you have to implement when doing that, like to draw a line, to, to write the text, to draw a polygon, to draw a rectangle. So you can imagine the, the vast amount of work this is. Fortunately, there is a second option. So there is a rendering path already implemented that works on Linux and that the GTK3 frontend and the headless, headless LibreOffice is very happy with. And this rendering path is using the Cairo canvas. So what we did is that like from the, from the old, old way of painting the widgets, we, we kept this Q painter and a Q style, which we then combined to render a Q image of a button, of a checkbox, of a, I don't know, a drop down. So we still like took the dogs old bits from the old implementation and we, we reused them in the new one. There was not much adaptation needed, this kind of, kind of work out of the box. But now, since we don't have X11 window anymore, we have a Q window, and the Q window contains a custom widget with the Cairo canvas inside. So we can take this Q image, we can convert it to the raw bitmap, which is something Cairo canvas can actually like work with, and then using some Cairo operators, some kind of paste operation, we can take this low-level bitmap, convert it from Q image, and we can paste it to the Cairo canvas. That works nicely. It's like, uh, so this is, this is what KF5 frontend uses. By the time I started to work on that, the Qt5 frontend was in pretty unfinished state. So for example, it couldn't write anything. So I decided to use this Cairo way of rendering things to kind of speed things up and have them like out for the users as, as quickly as possible. So uh, that was painting without X11, which works nicely. What about processing events without X11? As we have seen two slides back, every cell frame, every window is now native Q window or Q widget respectively. That means it can actually process Qt events. And since it's a custom widget, we can re-implement those handlers of the events. And by event, I mean things like user press the key, or user has moved the mouse, or oof, I don't know, yeah, things like that. So we re-implement handlers of those of those mouse and keyboard and Windows events. And in those re-implemented handlers, actually. Map them to the LibreOffice internal events. 
And additionally, for the events that are not caused by the user, for example, some, some API calls from the macros or from the extensions, there's this queue abstract event dispatcher that will, that will help us to, to deliver those events as well. Okay, so with the with the rendering of the widgets to give them give them the KF like look and feel without X11 and well without X11 that means it will work at on Wayland as well. With this off the table, how do we how do we achieve that the file picker, like the dialogues you see when you want to open a file or save a file or print to file, we have a native look and feel as well. First, I will show how, how those file picker dialogues somehow work on LibreOffice. So the core C++ code is pretty agnostic. So it just says, oh, open a file dialog. For example, the user is it wants to print to a file, and if they want to print to a file, they click print to a file, and then the dialog pops up to, to have the user pick which file to print into. And that's where the Sally instance takes over, and says, uh, yes, okay, create a file picker, and passes over to, to, to Joe, okay, a file picker, uh, which is a smart, who is a smart chap and he implements a couple of interfaces like X file picker and X folder picker interfaces. And yeah, he does the job and finally opens the file picker. And now the question, of course, is why so complicated? Why can't we just like open a file dialog and be done with it? So those X file picker and X folder picker APIs, those are the things like uh, get or set the display directory, like which directory to show, uh, get or set the current filter, which is this thing here, like with the file type into which to save. Uh, of course, like we could we could achieve all those things just with the native Qt or KD KD file picker. But there is a catch, and the catch is those custom checkboxes you see over here in this in this red circle, and those are this is a LibreOffice specific functionality. So apart from plain loading and saving the data, LibreOffice offers some additional functions, and for that we need to have some control in the dialog. And with those additional functions, I mean, for example, encrypting, like symmetric encryption upon save, or encryption with GPG key. If you want to more about, want to know more about encryption, uh, I, I suggest that you stay here, and you will see the next talk, because that's that's what we are going to talk about. <laughs> so yes, to be able to control like those LibreOffice extensions, all those checkboxes and other types of the widget, we need this API so that we can properly label the controls, enable, disable, hide them, show them as we need. So uh, compared to all the rest that I talked about before, like uh, migrating to the Qt native windows and the Qt native processing of events, uh, migrating the file picker was a piece of cake. Mainly thanks to thanks to Million Wolf of KD, KDAB. If you have LibreOffice six one and KD KD integration, this is what you have. So there's a oh you basically have GTK three user interface, and every file dialog you open is KD KF five plasma native file picker. So it's like the KF five over GTK3, while this KF5 file picker is a separate binary, which is communicating with the core LibreOffice over standard input and standard output. Um, it implements most of those X file picker interfaces I mentioned in the previous slide. 
So since this was this was a halfway done, all that was left to do was to take this functional part, like the functional implementation of the interface and creating of the plasma native file picker, kill all the all the interface like uh, input output uh, with fire because it was um, it was an um, unpenetrable template doom anyway. And um, well, then simply ask the cell instance to open K file dialog directly. And that was it. So some, with all of this off the table, some cherries on the top of the cake, some, some new things we, we implemented beyond the basic functionality. And um, one of them is, for example, native focus rectangles for the radio buttons, normal buttons, and checkboxes. So this is how it looked before. Can you see? Can you see the running ends along the bottom, um, around the bottommost widget? So this is this is a non-native focus rectangle that comes from VCL. So uh, we dropped that and replaced, replaced it with the beautiful KF native focus, which takes into account the theme the user, the widget theme you, the user has set. Another thing that was, uh, and that was like a bigger piece of work, but still kind of, kind of impressive, it's the native menu. Uh, if you remember, I mentioned that the, the main LibreOffice window is now a Q main window. That means it comes out of the box with some kind of menu support. So all we have to do is to provide the data and then it will be, it will be queued or plasma desktop environment that will, that will actually then take care about displaying the menus and handling all the menu events, which we then additionally have to map to the LibreOffice events, but all the rest, the desktop environment does. And you may have glanced that because I'm, I have, I was already briefly showing LibreOffice. So I'm using the global menu, which is, which is like the, the panel over there. And the feature of the global menu is that I, for, for all the, KF5 applications, I no longer see the menus inside the window to free some space, but I do see them in this global widget. So, so the LibreOffice window is this one here. As you can see, it has no menus, but the menus for the, for the window I have are here in this global widget menu, in, in this global menu widget. Which is, which is kind of, and um, like there was, there was like no additional effort needed because if you implement the native Q menu bar, Q menu, you get this global menu support in KF, KD Plasma for free. Um, since we also talked about file picker, we improved the file picker uh, a little bit. You can not only can you can you pick the file, but sometimes you need to pick a folder for for something. So this is how in KDE4 a folder picker looks like. This is not even KDE4. This is not even Plasma. That's some some plain old X11 generic dialog coming directly from LibreOffice. And now, with KF5 integration, we get the KF5 folder picker as well. Like not only file, but also folder picker. Okay, so by now, if you, if you now want to ask, so where's the code? Where are the binaries? Can I try? Can I try? I want to test. Uh, well, nowhere. <laughs> The code is in LibreOffice master. Uh, to get 
to to like get the touch of what, what I have shown to try for yourself. Unfortunately, you have to build LibreOffice yourself with Enable Qt5, Enable KDE5. <laughs> and this is not yet enabled for daily builds, so if you, if you want to download dailies and you want to try them, tough luck, like they don't have it enabled. But I, I hope this will change in the near future. And tentatively, all the stuff will be shipped with, with LibreOffice 6.2, whose first, first beta for, for the users to test comes in November this year and the final release in, in February next year. Uh, unfortunately, I, I learned that this, this lecture is going to take an hour, only this morning, and I, I planned for more half an hour, so, so I, I hope you people will, will have a lot of questions to fill, fill the remaining time. But, beware, <laughs> no, uh, like before, before I finish talking, I would, I would, uh, like to use this opportunity to, to, to thank my, my good friend, Jan Marek Logowski of City of Munich, who kickstarted all this work and very little of what I was showing today would be possible without him. So if there will be some round of applause at the end, uh, at least at least half of the applause goes to him. <laughs> uh, so are there are there any any questions, any criticism, comments, uh, offers of beer? Yes, thanks a lot for your talk. Um, one topic that you mentioned is Wayland. And um, my understanding was that on Wayland there should be some X11 emulation running. So, so will the old LibreOffice not run with the emulation? Or what is the pr well, I understand, of course, that you want to run natively on Wayland, that's for sure. But I was just wondering, will all those older versions f simply fail because the emulation doesn't do what it should? Uh, well, KD4, I, I don't know, is any, any distribution running KD4 still? I mean, uh, GTK3 frontend has support for Wayland as well. So even if the X11 emulate, I, I know nothing, unfortunately, about X11 emulation in Wayland. So, so even, even if the KD4 won't run with this X, X11 emulation on Wayland, one can still use the GTK3. And to achieve that, simply uninstall the KD, KD. Or, or another option is this, this, well, no, generic X11 frontend would fail probably as well. And it's but ugly anyway. <laughs> so yeah, the fallback is to use the GTK3. Thanks for the talk. Uh, are there any plans to get rid of the GTK3 dependency for the KD5 VCL? Because yes, this there's is a bug now on Wayland which um, just does not produce any window decoration when you run LibreOffice with KDE5. Well, uh, this we GTK, like, like this KD or KF5 over GTK3 that's in LibreOffice 6.1, mm -hmm. that's eventually going to die and that's going to be replaced with what ah, I was okay. showing and that will not need any GTK at all. Anybody else? Well, if not, then thank you very much for your attention and for your questions. I I think I will I will I will stick around. So uh, so if if you want to ask me something off the record, feel free to.